Seit nahezu zwei Monaten stehen die Verteidiger von Budapest von ihren Verbindungen abgeschnitten in heldenmütigem Kampf. Im Herzen der Donaustadt sind Männer und Frauen beim Bau von Barrikaden. Südwestlich von Budapest. The German situation in Budapest is dire. After two relief attempts from the north have ground to a halt, German High Command decides to launch one more operation towards the city, this time from the south. Codenamed Operation Conrad III, the 4th SS Panzer Corps secretly relocates towards Lake Balaton and with some much needed reinforcements begins its push forward on January 20th, 1945. To reenact this last desperate relief attempt, we'll be playing Scenario 11 from the Fortress Budapest book. The objective is for the German armored platoon to break through Soviet lines and continue advancing towards Budapest. The Germans receive two victory points for each panzer that makes it into or past the Soviet deployment zone, while the Soviets score two victory points for each panzer that is destroyed. One victory point is also awarded for each other unit that is destroyed. The scenario is played with the Dawn Assault special rule, meaning night fighting rules apply from the start of the game until they are lifted via a dice roll. At the start of each turn, a d6 is rolled, and if that result plus the turn number is equal or greater to 8, the sun comes up and the normal battlefield vision is restored. In addition, the Germans' entire force will come on the table on turn 1, while only half the Soviet platoon will come on turn 1. The rest will come in as reserves. The German armored platoon consists of a Panther, a Panzer IV, a Martyr III, two SDKFZ 251s, all regular, and two 10-man veteran grenadier squads. The plan is for the Germans to aggressively press forward from turn one, using their half-tracks to lead the way and deploy the grenadiers to take care of enemy infantry and armor with their Panzerfaust. The Soviets boast a T-3485, a T-3476, a Lendley Sherman and an M5 Stuart, two trucks, a rifle squad, an LMG squad, and three-man anti-tank team. All units are regular. The Soviet strategy will be to use a T-34-85 to deal with the Panther, while the rest of the tanks focus on infantry and the lighter armor. The anti-tank squad will wait for the German Panzers to approach the deployment zone. The battle commences with Germany pulling the first order dice, and use it to advance the Martyr III to a good firing position. This is followed by the Soviets deploying their Sherman in cover to keep an eye on the road. The German dice allows them to mirror this move with their Panzer IV. Next, the Soviets bring on a truck full of infantry and position it behind some hedges with their lend lease Stuart running to its side to protect their flank. The Germans respond by aggressively pushing with one half-track, using the roads for double movement to their advantage, and then another one up the left flank. Soviets pull the next dice and decide to unload an LMG squad from the truck to prepare for the oncoming German half-tracks. The Germans use their next two dice to go down with the units inside the half-tracks. With the third consecutive order dice, the rumbles of a beast can be heard. A Panther tank advances along the road to end turn one without a shot fired. Before turn two begins, a d6 is rolled to determine if the night rules still apply. The roll of a 5 doesn't add up, and the attack continues in the dark. First order dice goes to the Soviets, who decide to put the Stuart on ambush, waiting for German infantry. The Germans continue their push, advancing both the half-track and the Martyr III. Another order dice allows the other half-track to advance with double movement, but it is stopped short when the Stuart decides to use its ambush to fire. First, the Soviets roll for the distance they can see, using the chart found in the night fighting rules. A total sight distance of 20 inches means the half-track has been spotted. Needing a 5-plus to hit for hard cover, the main gun fires and misses, as does the Pintle HMG, but the hull-mounted MMG finds its way through and puts a pin on the target. The half-track then finishes its advance move. Next Soviet move allows the Sherman to rotate and aim towards the same half-track. Planning to fire, the sight distance roll comes up just short at 16 inches, and the fire order is negated. Another Russian die, another tank enters the battlefield, this time a T-34-76 that also takes aim at the half-track. The T-34 is able to see its target in the dark and easily hits on a 6, 
but the roll of a 2 means the hit glances, and the damage roll is reduced to a crew stun effect, adding 2 pins. Finally, the Germans get an order dice, and the veterans on board the half-track are able to disembark and advance towards the Sherman, and fire their 4 Panzerfausts. Only one hits on a 6, and then penetrates on a 6, and a damage roll of 3 sets the Sherman on fire. Forced to take a morale check with two pins, the regular Sherman passes with a six, and the fire is extinguished. Next, the Panzer IV advances and tries to fire at the T-34, but its sight roll of 22 inches is short and doesn't fire. Trying to force the Russians to expose their units first, the German player then goes down with the Grenadiers inside the second hand of It works, because the Russians pull six straight order dice. They put their LMG squad and truck on ambush, and then bring on another truck full of infantry. A rifle squad disembarks and takes aim at the grenadiers in the flank. Movement in long range means only one shot hits and it only applies a pin. Following this, the Soviets disembark their anti-tank team and move them up behind the steward. With the sixth dice, the Soviets try to bring on their T-34-85, but a roll of a 10 keeps the regular tank from entering the battlefield. The last dice of turn 2 sees the Panther rumble forward and eye up the T-34-76. The dice allowed to take aim, and firing, hits on a 5. The super heavy anti-tank gun easily penetrates on a 3, and a roll of a 6 means the poor T-34 explodes into a ball of fire. To kick off turn 3, a d6 is rolled to determine if the night rules still apply, and a roll of a 1 means it's still dark. Germany begins the turn by advancing its grenadier squad out of the open and behind the farmhouse. On the opposite flank, a German henomag advances and fires at the Soviets behind the hedges. Needing a 6 to hit for movement and hard cover, one shot lands and a regular is killed on a 5. A third German order dice allows the other half track to rally, but is only able to shed two of its three pins. Finally, the Russians pull an order dice, and the steward is activated on a fire order with the Hanna Mag in its sights. The main gun misses on a 1, but one hit is scored with the Pentel HMG, but it fails to penetrate. Another German dice allows the Panzer IV to advance and take aim at the Sherman, but the dice don't allow the target to be seen in the dark. On the other side of the table, the Grenadiers and the Hanna Mag decide to advance towards the Russian infantry in front of them. This, however, triggers the ambushes of both the LMG squad and the truck. 15 shots produce 11 hits and 8 Germans are killed. The survivors manage to pass their morale test and fire back, but with no hits. A Russian order dice is pulled, and the Sherman decides to advance, rotate, and shoot at the Panzer IV. The Sherman can see its target, but a roll of a 3 means the shot misses. Next, the Germans make an error with their Panther. Intending to fire at the Sherman and finish it off, the Germans forgot to take into consideration the range, and the sight roll comes nowhere close to allowing the Panther to see it, wasting the order dice. Back to the Soviets, and the T-34-85 is finally able to join the fight. He fires his MMG at the decimated Grenadier squad and kills one man, with the lone survivor still not fleeing the table. The main gun, however, misses the Hanamag with a roll of a two. Next, the Germans decide to put the Martyr III on ambush. The Soviets finish the turn by putting their empty truck on down and the rifle and anti-tank squad on ambush. It's now turn 4 and a roll of a 3 means that the night fight rules still apply. The Germans start determined to take out the Sherman with their Panzer IV. Advancing forward, the Panzer can easily spot its target, fires, and hits on a 6. The heavy anti-tank gun penetrates the front armor with a 3, and a roll of a 2 on the damage chart immobilizes the lend lease tank, leaving it with 3 pins. Another German order dice allows the Grenadiers to advance into cover behind the house, no doubt trying to get around the back of the Sherman. Soviets pull the next dice, and decide to shift the focus of the Stuart from the German infantry to the nearby Panzer IV. The light tank can see the Panzer and hits on a 5 and actually penetrates the side armor on another 5. The roll on the damage chart immobilizes the German tank with a 2, robbing the attackers of 2 victory points. 
Next, the Germans try to suicidally advance the lone surviving grenadier on the left flank, but he fails his order test and goes down. Then, the Soviets rally their immobilized Sherman, removing all three pins. Germany goes next, and they advance their right side Hennemag, shedding its pin and targeting the Soviet infantry in front of it. However, a roll of the three doesn't allow the half-track to see the infantry in the dark, so it doesn't fire. Biding their time, the Soviets next put a down order on their empty truck. Back to the Germans, who activate their left side half-track and advance towards the Soviet MMG truck. Firing six shots, the MMG hits twice, and the six penetrates the soft skin truck, but a roll of a one on the damage chart simply stuns the driver. The Russians regain the initiative and manage to put the LMG squad on ambush, and then they activate the T-3485, firing at the Animag, easily destroying it with its heavy anti-tank gun. The Germans respond by advancing the Panther forward and targeting the T-34. The Panther rolls and can see its target, hits on a 4, easily penetrates with its super heavy anti-tank gun, but rolls a 1 to damage, stunning the Russian crew. With its hull mounted MMG, it fires at the Russian LMG squad and kills one regular soldier to end the turn. At the beginning of turn 5, a 3 is rolled, meaning the sun has come up over the horizon and the night rules no longer apply. Germans pull the first order dice and try to activate the Panzer IV, but the regular tank fails its order test and goes down. The Soviets take advantage and decide to fire the Sherman 75mm gun at the Panzer. It hits on a 5, penetrates on a 5, and the Panzer IV explodes on a roll of a 4 on the damage chart, netting 2 victory points for the Soviets. The Sherman then fires its Hall MMG at the remaining half-track and manages to put another pin up. With another order dice, the Russians try to put a pin on the Panther with the Stuart, but the main gun misses on a 1. Ignoring the light tank, the Panther advances again towards the Soviet deployment zone. Firing at the T-3485, it hits, but only manages superficial damage with a 2, and a roll of a 3 means the crew is stunned again. This does mean the T-34 now has 4 pins and is forced to go down. The Hall MMG fires at the LMG squad and puts a pin on. With only one turn left, the Martyr III runs forward toward the Soviet deployment zone. Another German order dice, and the Hennemag activates and fires at the Russian rifle squad, but only manages a pin. Next, the Soviet truck passes its order test and fires at the open top to Martyr III and puts a pin on it, hoping to keep it from activating in turn 6. The lone German grenadier attempts to do something, anything, but he again is forced to go down. The Russians then advance their anti-tank team forward, hoping to use their Panzerfaust in the next turn. Another Soviet dice, and they put their other truck down to bide time. The Germans pull the next order dice, and the surviving Grenadier squad advances around the house. The rifle squad tries to trigger their ambush, but with a pin, they fail their order test and go down. The Grenadiers open fire and kill one of the riflemen. The Soviets pull an order dice and try to get the LMG squad in the fight, but they fail their order test and also go down. The final turn is initiated with the Soviet order dice, which they use to advance the anti-tank team towards the Panther. Firing their only Panzerfaust, they easily hit on a 5, but on a roll of a 1, it fails to penetrate. Both players forget that the Sherman is immobilized, and it activates and advances, rotating to take aim at the Panther's side armor. It hits on a 4, but doesn't penetrate on a roll of a 1. It does, however, put another pin on the Martyr 3 with its MMG. The Steward activates next and fires at the Martyr, but another poor roll means it misses with its main gun. Pintle HMG does manage to hit, but doesn't penetrate. Another Soviet order dice, and the rifle squad attempts to fire the Grenadiers, but instead rolls a double six on its order dust, and a two on the FUBAR chart means they target the nearest friendly unit. This puts six shots into the empty truck, and a six to damage means friendly fire destroys the transport, giving the Germans a free victory point. 
A German order dice goes to activate the Martyr III, which passes its order test and on a run order gets into the Soviet deployment zone. Next, the Panther is activated. Now, I'm not sure if this is okay in the rules since vehicles can't move through friendly units, but the Hannah Mag is now a flaming wreck and it made sense to me that the giant panther could just push it aside. So the German cat advances into the Soviet deployment zone and at point blank range deals the final blow to the T-34. After this, the Soviet player concedes the battle, noting that there is now no way to catch up to the Germans at victory points. The Germans have seven victory points, with two panzers in the Russian zone and three enemy units destroyed, while the Russians have three, two for killing the Panzer IV and one for the destroyed enemy. In the end, poor dice rolls on the Soviet side seemed to be the determining factor. The night rolls made it difficult for both sides, of course. But without the night rolls, I can see the Germans actually winning more decisively with their vastly superior firepower, especially the heavy anti-tank guns. The results are historical. The Germans did manage to break through and even annihilate a Soviet rifle and mechanized corps. However, Soviet reinforcements managed to destroy enough panzers and cut off the German attack, forcing them to retreat and give up all the territory they had won in hard-fought battle. This, of course, meant doom for the remaining defenders in Budapest.